Hello everybody, this is Minaza and you are watching the Surgical Whiteboard. Today we will continue talking about the colon and we will start talking about the colorectal carcinoma. But before we dive into the depth, I would like to emphasize the importance of the differentiation between rectum and colon from a surgical point of view. While colon and rectal carcinoma appears from the histopathological point of view almost identical, it's very important to differentiate between them as early as possible in the diagnostic phase, because each of them will undergo a markedly different therapeutic pathway. A rectal carcinoma or a tumor is defined as a lesion within 16 cm from the anal verge measured with a rigid uh, rectoscope. Here, a rigid rectoscope is a crucial part of the definition because a flexible coloscope can give us sometimes false measurement. Any lesion proximal to 16 cm from the inner verge up to the uh, ileocecal valve is termed a colon carcinoma. Rectal tumors represent 37% of all colorectal tumors, while sigmoid tumors are in the second place with uh, 27% and in the third place is the cecal tumors with 14%. Now we will talk about the risk factors of colorectal carcinoma. Uh, first of all, the acquired risk factors are smoking, excessive alcohol consumption, obesity, low fiber or fat-rich diet. Genetic risk factors include inflammatory bowel disease, such as ulcerative colitis, in which the lifelong probability of acquiring um, a colorectal carcinoma is um, about 10% and to lesser extent uh, Crohn's disease. Another pathway of formation of colorectal carcinoma which can be considered uh, the most common pathway is the adenoma carcinoma sequence which means formation of a malignant tumor on top a pre-existing um, a benign tumor which is a colorectal polyp. Here we must differentiate between three types of colorectal polyps which is adenomatous polyp, adenovellus polyp and vellus polyp, which is the most common precancerous lesion. This uh, formation is due to a mutation of the APC gene and P53 gene. Another genetic predisposing factor is the familial adenomatous polyposis syndrome, which is characterized by the presence of more than 100 polyp all over the colon. Here, the risk of the colorectal carcinoma is 100%. There is another type of the familial adenomatous polyposis, which is the attenuated type, in which we can see less than 100 polyps in the colon, which is also a high risk for colorectal carcinoma. The last variation is the hereditary non polyposis colorectal carcinoma. Uh, also known as the Lynch syndrome. Lynch syndrome carcinoma uh, is usually associated with other carcinomas like ovary and intubital carcinomas, stomach carcinoma, urethral carcinoma, and rarely skin and brain carcinomas. This familiar type of colorectal carcinoma represents about 3% of all colorectal carcinomas. A Lynch syndrome or a familiar colorectal carcinoma is suspected when the Amsterdam uh, second criteria are met. When at least three patients with a Lynch-related carcinoma are diagnosed, one of them is a first degree relative to the other two. Uh, in two successive generations, like a father and a son, and at least one of them was younger uh, than 50 years old at the first diagnosis. Also, Fab must be excluded, and all tumors must be histologically confirmed. Another widely used criteria. Uh, to diagnose the Lynch syndrome is the Bethesda criteria. When met, the specimen uh, postoperative must be sent to genetic investigation. The diagnostic test is the MSI or the microsatellite instability. The Bethesda criteria includes a colorectal carcinoma uh, at age younger uh, than 50 years old, multiple Lynch syndrome related carcinoma, meta order synchronous, uh, microscopic or the histologically. Uh, characteristic of the microsatellite instability, one first degree relative was Lynch syndrome related carcinoma uh, younger as uh, 50 years old, two first or second degree relatives uh, with Lynch related carcinoma at any age. Here we can notice that this criteria is more post operative criteria uh, in contrary to the Amsterdam criteria, which is a history based. When a Lynch syndrome is established through the previous criteria, in a patient, all the first degree relatives of this patient should undergo surveillance, uh, which means colonoscopy every two years, starting from age five years younger as the first diagnosis 
of the patient. In this particular cohort of patients, it was suggested that aspirin 300 mg daily could have a protective effect against the formation of colorectal carcinoma in families affected by Lynch syndrome. Prevention of the colorectal carcinoma um, depends on the lifestyle modifications such as quitting smoking and alcohol consumption, uh, healthy uh, high fiber diet. The second pillar of prevention is the early detection, which includes a yearly occult blood in stool at the age of 50 when positive a colonoscopy must, uh, must follow, uh, or a colonoscopy at the age of 55 when positive follow-up is recommended, but when negative it must be repeated in 10 years. This was according to the German guidelines, uh, which is uh, somehow widely accepted. Symptoms of colorectal carcinoma uh, depends on the site uh, of the carcinoma. Uh, for example, for rectal and uh, descending colon carcinoma, the most common feature is altered bowel habits or bleeding per rectum. Uh, but for the uh, right-sided lesions uh, like cecal carcinoma, uh, the most common uh, features are anemia, fatigue, anorexia, and paraneoplastic syndrome. This could be explained by the fact that uh, uh, the descending colon and the rectum are relatively narrow uh, lesions with high intraluminal pressure which can be easily um, uh, obstructed or affected by a growing lesion. Uh, while on the other hand, the uh, cecum and the ascending colon are a capacious organ uh, in which a luminal lesion rarely causes a local obstruction. And the more common features is the general symptoms of uh, tumors like anemia and paraneoplastic syndrome. According to the British guidelines, high-risk criteria of colorectal carcinoma uh, includes altered bowel habits and bleeding per rectum for six weeks, altered bowel habits uh, for six weeks uh, at age over 60 years old, bleeding per rectum at any age without anal symptoms uh, such as pain, itching, hemorrhoids, and uh, discomfort, palpable right abdominal mass or rectal mass, iron deficiency anemia, which is otherwise unexplained. Now we will move to the classification of the colorectal carcinoma based on histological features. Uh, this classification is based on the TNM 8th edition. Uh, as we see here in this diagram, this is a cross section of the colonic wall formed of mucosa, muscularis mucosa, submucosa, musculosa propria, pericolic fat, and serosa. A superficial tumor which is only confined to the mucosa layer is called carcinoma in situ or TIS. A second stage is the T1 tumor which invades uh, the muscularis mucosa and reaches the submucosal layer. Reaching the submucosa is a landmark in the natural history of any tumor uh, because this layer is rich with lymphatic supply and the uh, uh, probability of lymphatic spread is dramatically increased. A T2 tumor uh, penetrates the submucosa and invades the muscularis propria, while the T3 tumor reaches the muscularis propria and reaches the pericolic fat. A T4 tumor uh, perforates the serosa. T4A includes a perforated tumor without invasion of adjacent organs. T4B tumor invades adjacent organs uh, like spleen or kidneys. Now we will move to the end classification. Here we can see the uh, marginal artery uh, supplied by the vasorector coming from the colic arteries. N0 means no lymphatic invasion. N1A means one lymph nodes in the pericolic area. N1B, uh, two to three lymph nodes in the pericolic areas. N1C, uh, where there's no affected lymph nodes, but there's a presence of isolated tumor in the lymph drainage area of the tumor. N2A, four to six lymph nodes. N2B is seven or more affected lymph nodes in the drainage area of the tumor. Here we must notice uh, that in order to perform an adequate uh, end stage estimation, a minimum of 12 lymph nodes must be harvested during the OP. Only regional lymph nodes counts along the marginal artery or the mesocolon or the mesentery. Other than that, lymph node uh, invasion is considered to be distant metastasis or M1A stage which is also defined as the presence of distant metastasis in one organ other than peritoneal tubes. M1B, two organs. 
and M1C is a business of veterinary land use. The UICC staging system is also uh, uh, based on the TNM classification where stage 0 is carcinoma in situ, stage 1 and 2 are uh, carcinoma without uh, lymph nodes invasion, stage 3 is with, uh, when the lymph nodes invasion appears, and stage 4 is a distance metastasis stage, which is also considered as a systemic disease. A simplified version of this staging system is the Duke's staging system. Uh, in which stage A is the carcinoma in situ and uh, carcinoma confined to the muscular propria, uh, stage uh, 0 and 1. Uh, stage B is uh, without uh, lymph nodes invasion but penetrating the muscular propria. And stage C with lymph nodes invasion, stage D is the distal metastasis. This staging system is widely known and used in the United Kingdom. In the next episode, we will pick up from here and continue uh, to talk about the treatment option of colorectal carcinoma based on the staging systems. Mm -hmm.